I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems.
Good evening, welcome to Undaunted, bringing into the news on Told Stories. I am only up my last. Let's begin. Things are not turning out to be business as usual for the White House. Ukraine gradually feels isolated. NATO help is not forthcoming. The war is still in need fourth week. At this point, we must agree that anything that can lead to war should be avoided. Let's consider this. Children, youth, mothers, and fathers are taken captive, living in inhuman conditions without water, food, or even medication. Shouldn't this end at once? Who has the magic wand? Can Biden's diplomacy in Europe this week provide any solution? Putin has proven to redundancy in the face of diplomacy. In West Africa, Senegal might be facing some serious economic crisis. The suffering people of Ambazonia admits the war is hit by an epidemic. Victoria Hospitals in the home front is overwhelmed as 600 cholera cases confirmed. Uganda, DR Congo, soldiers in pursuit of ADF rebels in Ituri. In Undaunted tonight, we will examine these in depth. But first, let's get the headlines. Prime headlines The war in Ukraine escalating Pentagon condemns Kremlin refusal to rule up use of nuclear weapons Are Tunisians ready for a constitutional referendum? What's happening with leadership in Africa? Victoria hospitals and the home front overwhelmed as 600 cholera cases confirmed. Gendarmerie in Souza of French Cameroon accused of causing the death of an Amazonian refugee. Genoa Public du Cameroon journalist exposes treachery within the ranks of pro LRC egocentric gang bent on destroying the struggle. French Cameroon goalkeeper Andrew Nana escapes onward from a road accident. AFCON 2023 preliminary qualifiers begin. in its fourth week at this point we must agree that anything that can lead to war should be avoided let's consider this children youths mothers and fathers are taken captive or living in inhuman conditions without water food or even medication shouldn't these end at once who has the magic wand can Biden's diplomacy in Europe this week provide any solution Putin has proven to redundancy in the face of diplomacy. Let's get into the story. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky accused Russian forces of seizing a humanitarian convoy near Manguish, 
west of Maripo. Employees of the state emergency service and bus drivers have taken captive. He said, adding that 100,000 people remained in the city living in inhuman condition in a total blockade without food, water, medication, under constant shelling, under constant bombings. Russian forces are now inside Maripol, a senior U.S. defense official said. Two super-powerful bombs rocked the city on Tuesday, even as rescue efforts were ongoing. Local authorities gave this report. Russia's combat power in Ukraine has declined below 90% of its pre-invasion levels for the first time since its attack began. A senior U.S. defense official said this on Tuesday, suggesting heavy losses of weaponry and growing casualties, describing morale issues, command and control problems, a reliance on conscript and a stalled advance to Kyiv. Premier's spokesman, Dmitry Poskov refused to rule out the use of nuclear weapons in an interview with CNN on Tuesday. Poskov told the broadcaster that such arms could be used if Russia faced an existential threat. Russia has the world's largest stockpile of nuclear warheads. The Pentagon later condemned Peskov's refusal to rule out the use of nuclear weapons. U.S. President Joe Biden is expected to announce new sanctions against Russia and new measures to tighten existing ones when he visits Brazil this week. The deputy head of Kiev's police force has accused Russia of using white phosphorus munitions in the city of Kramatsov in Donetsk, Oliki, Pilishiki's shared online footage, which could not be independently verified, of material burning fiercely underneath a pile of aggregates. Another use of phosphorus ammunition in Kramatorsk, he said. Zelensky will speak virtually at the NATO summit in Brazil on Thursday, where U.S. President Joe Biden is also planning to push for new sanctions against Russia. Three important summits are scheduled this week. The G7, NATO, and the EU, he said. New packages of sanctions, new support. About 3,000 people in the occupied southern city of Kesson are running out of food and medical supplies. A spokesperson for Ukraine's foreign ministry said Kesson was the first major Ukrainian city to fall into Russian hands since the invasion began on 24th February. Russia plans to unleash a great terror on Kesson by kidnapping residents and taking them across the Russian border, an FSB whistleblower has claimed. The Kremlin was no longer willing to play nicely with protesters in the Ukrainian city. A letter said Russian forces have only three, four days of fuel, food and ammunition left to conduct the war after a breakdown in their supply chain. Ukrainian military commanders have claimed the statements were described as possible by Western officials. Russian forces have kidnapped 2,000 389 children from the Russian-controlled territories of Luhansk and Donetsk. The U.S. Embassy in Kyiv has said, citing figures by Ukraine's foreign ministry, the embassy said in his words, I quote, this is not assistance, it is kidnapping. The Ukrainian health minister, Viktor Lashok, said 10 hospitals had been completely destroyed since Russia invaded. Other hospitals could not be restocked with medicines and supplies because of nearby fighting, the minister added. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Gotez, said it is time for Russia to end its absurd and unwindable war in Ukraine. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Gotez, said it is time for Russia to end its absurd and unwinnable war in Ukraine as the EU prepared to set up a trust fund aimed at helping Kyiv repel the invasion and rebuild afterwards. Speaking to reporters at the UN headquarters in New York, Gautel said the war was going nowhere. The United States and its Western allies are assessing whether Russia should remain within the group of 20, the G20, grouping of major economies following its invasion of Ukraine. Sources involved in the discussion told Reuters on Tuesday. Russian forces have looted and destroyed a laboratory at the site of the Shebol nuclear power plant, Ukrainian officials said. 
Russian occupiers illegally seized the newest laboratory, the state agency of Ukraine for exclusion zone management, said this in a statement on Tuesday. The laboratory processes radioactive waste contains high active samples of radionuclides, which are now in the hands of the enemy, the agency also added. The lab was described as the unique complex with powerful analytical capabilities unavailable elsewhere in Europe. The Russians captured the plants in the first few days of the war, holding workers there hostage for weeks before some were released. I would like to find out from you, Smart, what's this whole talk about putting thread on nuclear weapon? What are the chances to have this thread halted? Ongi, I'll attest that Putin must not be underestimated owing to the ongoing invasion and aggression in the senseless war in Ukraine. The situation is very uncertain. It seems to me like a cat and dog wrestle. Now, the Pentagon has condemned Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov's refusal to rule out the use of nuclear weapons during the Ukraine conflict. Russian President Vladimir Putin raised the threat of using nuclear weapons in an interview with CNN on Tuesday. Peskov refused to rule out their use. Peskov told the broadcaster that such arms could be used if Russia faced an existential threat. Russia has the world's largest stockpile of nuclear warheads. U.S. Department of Defense spokesman John Kirby said Moscow's nuclear remarks were dangerous. Speaking to reporters, he said it's not the way a responsible nuclear power should act. However, Kirby has added that Pentagon officials haven't seen anything that would lead us to conclude that we need to change our strategic deterrent posture. We monitor this as best as we can every day, he added. Former U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta also criticized Peskov's comment. I don't see how you can see it any other way but as dangerous when Russia is looking for a possible excuse for the use of low-yield nuclear weapons, Panetta told CNN. And basing it frankly on a very false premise that somehow Russia is being threatened, I think that presents a real concern that Russia at least is considering that possibility. This is just one side of the story. Putin from certain events on the ground is not backing down any day soon. We have our ears on ground anyway. Vladimir Putin is using his backup plan, using his military advantage to strike a deal. So Zelensky has agreed to a peace deal, but he just has one condition. Any decision made by Ukraine may be subject to a referendum. Putin seems to have ruled out regime change. He's focusing on the political settlement. Now, here are his major demands. Neutrality for Ukraine, recognition for Crimea, recognition for Donbass. Will Ukraine accept these demands? Zelensky has accepted the principle of neutrality. He realizes that NATO is not happening. It might just be an illusion. But what will Ukrainian neutrality look like? Will it be a Swiss model? The Australian model or the Irish model, Zelensky said none of the above. He is pushing for the Ukrainian model of neutrality. That model requires security for Ukraine. Countries must promise to defend Ukraine's neutrality. The question is, who is going to settle? Zelensky's choices are clear. He wants guarantees from both Turkey and Israel, but bordered countries are soft on Russia. Turkey is even a member of NATO. The second disagreement is on Donbass and Crimea. Russia wants Ukraine to recognize its region. Donbass is independent. Crimea as part of Russia. But here too, Zelensky is willing to concede, but not immediately. He hopes to discuss this after Russia pulls out. But will Russia agree to all of that? He justified this war by claiming to liberate Donbass. His biggest military gains have been in the East. Will Putin sacrifice all of that? The sanctions by the West are also weighing in. Any agreement will have to be signed by America. The West is more focused on shipping weapons, on funding an insurgency. A peace deal is not their priority because of that the talks are lopsided.
You have a rampant Russia on one side and a desperate and lonely Ukraine on the other side. Zelensky is under pressure, the carnage, each air strike, each bombings, every catastrophe is pushing him towards the peace deal. Biden assumes his partners will kill in un unabated. He accuses India of being shaky. No, but we think India has put their priorities first. That's not shaky. That's self-interest, and Joe Biden should know this. For decades, his country has put self-interest first, invaded sovereign states, toppled regimes, supported dictators and tyrants. So if Biden wants to be shaky, he should look at America's own morale standing. For nearly three decades, America was like the alpha, but that perception is changing. First was Afghanistan and now Ukraine. America is not the invisible superpower anymore. So his allies are seemingly looking out for themselves. As days go by, the situation might be getting even more complex. President Saeed's behavior is turning his country upside down. This week, a national consultation process to help frame a new constitution ended. Still, many are left wondering whether the country will continue down a democratic path. In West Africa, Senegal might be facing some serious economic crisis. Senegalese President Macky Sall met with World Bank President David Malpass on the second day of the World Water Forum. The AU chairperson reiterated his request that the institution support African and other developing countries through the special drawing rights system. As the second day of the World Water Forum kicked off in the Dhaka, Senegalese president and African Union chairperson Macky Sall met with the World Bank president. The officials discussed challenges and situations to address the water crisis, but economic recovery and special schemes for developing countries were part of the agenda. In Kenya, it reported donated COVID-19 vaccines have expired. Nearly 840,000 vaccines against COVID-19 have expired in Kenya, even before they could be administered to the public. The Kenyan government announced in a statement on Wednesday, adding that the vaccines are those that were received through donations, deploring a persistent lack of confidence in vaccination, as well as the short life of the doses. These are AstraZeneca vaccines received through the Global COVAX Initiative. The Health Ministry statement reads, Every expired dose represents a missed opportunity to save a life, it added. On a heated notice, Ugandan DR Congo soldiers in pursuit of ADF rebels in Ituri. Charred homes, burnt out vehicles and ghost villages littered the Beni to Commando Road, a testament to the reign of terror inflicted by the Allied Democratic Forces, ADF, rebel group in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. A column of a hundred or so troop carriers, led by jeep fitted with machine guns, left Bini in North Kivu province for the town of Commanda in Ituru. In Ituru. A column of a hundred or so troop... Uh, Sorry again. A column of a hundred or so troop carriers led by jeeps fitted with machine guns left Bini in North Kivu province for the town of Komanda in Ituru, kicking up yellow dust on the notorious and wildly feared 105 kilometers long, 65 mile long road. Along the route, a commercial artery linking the two provinces, rebels of the ADF, which is presented by the Islamic State group as its central African affiliate, have meted out extreme violence against civilians, often with machetes and other bladed weapons. These are developing stories and we will bring you details as they unfold. smart for that succinct coverage now on our national news victoria hospitals in the home front are overwhelmed as 600 cholera cases have been confirmed 
Cholera is an infectious and often fatal bacterial disease of the small intestine, typically contracted from infected water supplies and causing severe vomiting and diarrhea. The people of Ambazonia must be healthy till we get to Boya, and as such, cleanliness as well as healthy lifestyle is recommended. Gab Ellison completes the story. Victoria hospitals in the home front overwhelmed as 600 cholera cases confirmed. A new wave of cholera outbreak is sweeping across the city of Victoria in Faco County of the home front. At least 600 new cases have been confirmed, leaving health facilities overwhelmed as health authorities battle to contain the disease. Reports say 682 cases had been registered in the Victor Health District with 14 deaths recorded from between March 11 and 22. Images that we have received now show patients receiving treatment on the floor of hospital wards, while others are at hospital verandas because rooms are already saturated. It is reported that many people are taking their patients to hospitals in neighboring towns like Tiko and Mutengene for treatment. As of Tuesday, March 22, the region had recorded 1,906 cholera cases with 44 deaths. Also, three health districts, Coomber North, Coomber South, and Tico are the latest to record outbreaks. The health districts of Boya, Victoria, Bakasi, and Kondo Titi were the first to record outbreaks in a cholera wave that started in October 2021. Health officials have warned that people should watch what they eat and drink. People are told to be alert and should drink purified or clean water, eat properly cooked food, wash hands before and after meals, and after using the toilet, thoroughly wash fruits and vegetables before eating and to avoid roadside food altogether. The Interim Government Department of Health and Social Services, under the leadership of Dr. Yaya Fonyi, is working closely with the team in the home front to ensure some form of assistance. Preventing cholera medics say is reliant on clean water, a resource which remains limited in these areas where the outbreak is concentrated. The surge in outbreak cases in Victoria intensifies at a time when the city joined the rest of the world on March 22 under the theme Groundwater, making the invisible visible. Gab Ellison reporting for Undaunted, ABC Amber News. This is to our homeland fighters. Hold your grabs tight. Let no one deceive you. Cool plotters know exactly what they are doing, which is not for your interest. You guys are our only source of hope. Amazonians, you get it all what Mr. Bien Tong, a Francophone journalist in exile, explaining a very important secret to Amazonians in the French language, how Colonel Emmy Banque is controlling his three factions of cool plotters. Namely, Marianta, Chris Anus Group, Ayaba Chose, ADF Group, and Sisiko Ayuk Tabe Julius in Kondengi, managed by Yarima in the diaspora. The regime of Yaoundé, as it says, is working very hard with this group to destroy the IG and Dr. Sako because he stands firm for the Swiss stocks on separation and nothing less, nothing more. Emi Bankwe is the brain behind the creation of the Bui Unity Warriors in order to eliminate all ARF fighters. He also revealed that Ayabacho's visit visits he also reveals that Ayabacho visits Yaoundé nearly every week and heavily protected by La Republic de Cameroon military. Ambazonians, the list is long. Let our fighters be well sensitized on these revelations. This is very serious. Some few disgruntled imported Bami Anglophone criminals who address themselves as Ambazonians want to destroy our struggle. Get this well into your subconscious because Ambazonia must be free. After all is said and done, we need to play some checks. Ambazonia must see the dynamics of today's global politics from its own lenses. The European Union remains a toothless bulldog on the ongoing genocide in southern Cameroon's Ambazonia. How can the European Union issue a statement about the crisis in Cameroon? The Cameroons mentioning Boko Haram and ISIS and on the southern Cameroon's Ambazonia 
they express their interest for their 1,000th time to support mediation, completely avoiding the Swiss-led process. How can the European Union issue a statement about the crisis in Cameroon, praising the 2019 failed major national monologue, which was more or less a CPDM come together where participants were interested in their take-home envelopes per diem, rather than finding lasting solutions to a crisis that has developed to a full-fledged war? The fact that the EU supports the outcome of this monologue, whose major outcome was an empty special status in vain reconstruction amid a war, speaks volume of this body EU being nothing but a paper tiger. The EU remains a paper tiger or window dressing because it shows sympathy for the oppressor La Republic de Cameroon more than the oppressed Southern Cameroon's Amazonia that has lost over 30,000 innocent souls, had over 500 villages burned down by the colonial military looting properties and rendering hundreds of thousands homeless. Yes, the European Union is a toothless bulldog and if it were not, it would be able to force La Republic de Cameroon to the Swiss-led process where the interim government under its no-nonsense president, Dr. Samuel Ikome Sako, for a lasting solution. Separation. P.W. Bamenda Football Social Club, popularly known as Abakwa Boys, on Tuesday, March 22, 2022, presented their trophies won at the last cup of neighboring La Republic de Cameroon to front the one-time club president for 10 years. The occasion took place at Fundi's Ngofolu's residence in Mefor and Afamba division near Yaounde, where he has been residing following the outbreak of the Ambazonia Liberation War declared by Beer on November 30th, 2017. The presentation was done by the club president, Abundi Pascal, in the presence of the SDF senators and parliamentarians. Your victory makes not only NW, SW proud, but the entire Cameroon sports. It's not politics and should not be politicized. It's not Ambazonia. Frundi and joined. Killings. More killings. Our brothers and sisters must at this point begin to be aware of their environment to prevent some of these senseless killings. Dear Ambazonians, we all need to be alive to get to Boyer. Today, we count another loss. An officer of the National Gendarmerie in Suze, in the Littoria region, accused of course and the death of a 29-year-old displaced person, a refugee and a victim of the war in Ambazonia, has survived mob justice. The IDP was dismembered by a speedy truck as he struggled to escape from Gendarmerie officers of Nkapa in Suze around 1 a.m. Tuesday, 22nd March. The refugee hails from Fonfuka in the Boya County of Ambazonia. According to eyewitnesses, the 29-year-old, whose name we got as Bawa Divine, was being pursued by a gendarmerie officer of Nkapa Gendarmerie for him to show his identification card. Bawa and his friend were drinking at a roadside joint after they had just returned from their usual daily work from a plantation company. As they were drinking and playing the Chinese game of chance, some gendarme officers of the Nkapa Gendarmerie were on their routine night patrol checks when they stumbled on the group of eight guys drinking together with others. They began checking ID cards, but at the sight of the uniformed officers, Bauer and his friends took to their heels, and the gendarmes kept a steady and imposing speed behind them. Boa's friends managed to dribble the gendarmes and disappeared into the darkness. But unfortunately for Bauer, who wanted to cross the road, still followed by an angry gendarme who was screaming, Arrête! He was crushed by a truck that was en route to Douala. He died on the spot. At the side of the two-year-old dismembered body, some irate youths of Suze fell on the gendarme like bees, bashing him from all parts of his body, and within a few minutes, his face was disfigured. Alerted about the tragic incident, his colleagues came to retaliate. The ugly scene ensued for close to an hour until an additional team from the military headquarters in Bonajo Douala came for reinforcement. Sensing how deadly the day was unfolding, the divisional officer for FICO subdivision, Iswara Magzim, sent for the traditional ruler 
of all Anglophones in Susa, Chief Toja Toja John, popularly known in Susa as Pa John Mundani, before Tampas could be canned. Bawa's corpse was later buried at the Susa Cemetery, while the said gendarme was rushed to the Bonasama District Hospital in Douala, where he is currently receiving treatment. Yes. Stock taking is very primordial after putting the Banana Republic on its knees economically, financially, physically, spiritually, and installing moral decadence, pilfering of state coffers, open air corruption, embezzlement. For 37 years, La Republic du Cameroon has stopped the charts internationally, or at least amongst the top five of the most corrupt countries in the world. Not once or twice, they have won the trophy. That's one achievement we can forget of Paul Vias Cameroon. For 37 years, the number of civil administrators trained at NM, the pompous speeches of the government or the votes of parliament have only helped to plant French Cameroon in an abyss of social, moral, financial, economic depravity, making some pundits including Rosicrucians, Freemasons and other Illuminati who run the Yawunda Junta to now ask for prayers from Almighty God as the worst looms in the horizon for the nation. For 37 years with the party leader Paul Bia clocking 40 in office as president, the CPDM has succeeded to bring down the image of French Cameroon from Hitato, Africa in miniature, breadbasket, island of peace to a mere shadow of itself. Some say La Republic de Cameroon now is a nation on drips and moves caps in hand boring to make ends meet. For 37 years, the CPDM government has slashed civil servant salaries twice and has remained unable to pay them with accrued arrears, which is the main reason for the consistent protests, strikes and political instabilities in the country. As we report, another bill is lurking in the corridors of parliament for a new salary cut because BS Cameroon is truly on drips economically. Good to take stock because for 37 years, the CPDM government has been able to send a whole cabinet or government to its dreaded Kondengi, central prison either for trumped up charges of embezzlement or mere settlement of scores, thereby beating world record or Guinness book. Let me highlight some of the names. Ephraim Inani, former prime minister, 20 years, Titus Edzoa, former secretary general at the presidency, liberated. Jean Marie Antangana Mebara, former Secretary General at the Presidency, 60 years. Marafa Hamido Yaya, former Secretary General at the Presidency, 20 years. Polycarp Ababa, former Minister of Economy and Finance, 31 years. Uben Ulangwena Awono, former Minister of Public Health, 30 years. Edgar Allen Mbengo, former Minister of Defense, Transport, and wife Benedette Mebengo, Madam Haman Adama, former Minister of Secondary Education, liberated. Madam Catherine Abena, former Secretary of State for Secondary Education, died in detention. Essimi Menya Mevwe, former Minister of Economy and Finance, fled to the USA. And Tangana Kuna, former Minister of Energy and Water Resources, fled but was caught in Nigeria disguised. He is now in Kondenge Prison. Emmanuel Lebo, for Director of Salaries in the Ministry of Finance, operated 2,601 fictitious salary accounts where he has his bulu beti, chop broke potters, fed fat. He has been given 104 years suspended sentence in Kondengi. Yves Mikel Fotso, former General Manager of Khmer, 25 years. Alphonse Siam Siwe, former Minister of Mines, Gervai Mendoza, former general manager of CRTV, died in detention. Zakias Mungwe for Jindam, former GM of Cameroon Industrial and Shipping Yard. His property was confiscated. Roger Antongo Ngwene, former GM of Airports de Cameroon, 50 years. Gilles Roger Belinga, former GM of Cameroon Real Estate, 20 years in prison. Emmanuel Gerard Ondondong, former GM of Council Support Fund, abbreviated in the enemy language. Faycom, 20 years. Mohamed Iya, former GM of Sedo Cotton, 15 years. 
This list of VIP or high-profile prisoners is exhaustive and nearly all those still in active service or power in BSCPDM politicized public service are potential criminals. Only for 37 years of catastrophic management, the CPDM stands out as a very good example for Ambazonia to liberate itself and stay clear of the mess that it has installed. That's where we are, and that's why Ambazonia must be free. I am Star Smart, reporting for Undaunted ABC Amber News. And in sports, Cameroon's goalkeeper Andre Onana escapes on hot from a road accident. Barcelona reportedly signs Frank Kessi. AFCON 2023 preliminary qualifiers starts today. And in tennis, Ash Barty announces short retirement from tennis at 25. Gab Ellison has the detail. World Sports. Cameroon goalkeeper Andre Onana escapes on hoard from a road accident. The accident occurred as Andre Onana, who plays for Dutch club Ajax Amsterdam, was traveling from Yaoundé, the capital of Cameroon, to Douala. The Cameroon Football Federation said he had rejoined team in Douala after the accident and was fine, although he was due to undergo a preventative examination in the hospital. Cameroon hosts Algeria on Friday in Douala in the first leg of their World Cup qualifier. The return match in Algeria will be played next Tuesday, and the winner of the match will be one of the five African teams to book a place at this year's World Cup in Qatar. National broadcaster CRTV released images from what it said was the site of the crash. They show a Range Rover SUV and another vehicle with the front end crushed after what appears to be a head-on collision. It is not known whether Andronana, 25, was a driver or passenger in the Range Rover. Barcelona reportedly signed Frank Kessi. The planning for next season has already begun for Barcelona as they have reportedly signed AC Milan midfielder Frank Kessi. According to Fabrizio Romano, the club reached a four-year deal with Kessi that will see him earn net wages of 6.5 million euros a season. His contract with the Serie A side ends this summer and he made his intentions known that he was not going to sign an extension. Barcelona saw an opportunity to get a highly rated player on a free deal and pending official confirmation have done so. Kessie becomes Barcelona's second signing after Chelsea's Andres Christensen. AFCON 2023 preliminary qualifiers. The race to grab places at the Total Energies 2023 African Cup of Nations in Cote d'Ivoire begins today with the preliminary round which will decide the six teams to advance to the group stage of the qualification tournament. The preliminary round consists of the 12 lowest ranked countries among the 54 entrants Somalia, Mauritius, Gambia, South Sudan, Chad, Sao Tome and Principe, Seychelles, Lesotho, Djibouti, Eswatini, Botswana and Eritrea. Even before the matches kick off, Botswana have already booked their place in the qualification group stage after Eritrea withdrew from the competition. With the exception of Gambia and Mauritius, who made their maiden Afghan appearance in the last edition in Cameroon and in 1974 respectively, all the other countries are chasing their first participation in Africa's Premier Football Tournament. For games coming up today, Seychelles will take on Lesotho, Djibouti will lock horns with South Sudan, Somalia will battle things out with Eswatini and Chad will play host to Gambia. When Rooney and Patrick Vera have been inducted into the EPL Hall of Fame, when Rooney and Patrick Vera have become the latest players to be inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame. Rooney is the Premier League's all-time second top scorer with 208 goals for Manchester United with whom he won five league titles and Everton. Vera won three Premier League titles during 11 seasons with Arsenal and captained the Invisible team to the title in 2003-2004 stroke when they did not lose a match. Rooney and Vera are the 9th and 10th players to be inducted in the Hall of Fame joining Alan Shearer, Thierry Henry, Eric Cantona, Roy Keane, Frank Lampard, Dennis Burkham, Steven Gerrard, and David Beckham. Tennis Ashbarty announces shock retirement from tennis at 25. The world number one stunned the tennis world today Wednesday by announcing her departure from the sports at the age of 25. 
delivering the bombshell news in an interview with Casey Delacroix via her social media channels. Today is difficult and filled with emotions for me as I announce my retirement from tennis. Barty wrote in a post on Instagram alongside a video of the interview. I wasn't sure how to share this news with you, so I asked my good friend Casey Delequa to help me. I am so thankful for everything this sport has given me and leave feeling proud and fulfilled. Barty departs the sports at the peak of her power as the reigning Australian Open and Wimbledon champion who has held the world number one position since winning the 2019 French Open. Barty said she had been thinking about retiring for a long time and had a gut feeling after last year's Wimbledon win. Rafael Nadal out for up to six weeks with a rib injury. The injury occurred on Saturday during the Spaniards win against Carlos Alcaraz in the Indian World semi-final. The 21-time Grand Slam champion found breathing painful and said he was dizzy as he lost the final to Taylor Fritz. Nadal 35 is expecting to miss both of next month's clay court events in Monte Carlo and Barcelona. While the French Open begins in Paris on May 22nd, Nadal has won the title at Roland Garros a record 13 times. In a post on social media, he said, When he returned to Spain, I immediately went to visit my medical team to do tests after I played with discomfort in the final, he added. As it turns out, I have a stress crack in one of my ribs. This is not good news, and I did not expect this. Kazakhstan's Nijat Rahimov stripped of Rio 26 Olympic gold medal and banned. Rahimov, 28, has been found guilty of substituting his urine four times, which under weightlifting anti-doping rules is use of a prohibited method. The 2015 world champion was banned for two years in June 2013 after testing positive for anabolic steroids. Rahimov went on to win the 77 kg division in Rio a year later, lifting a then world record 214 kg in the clean and jerk. A statement from the Court of Arbitration for Sports added in January 2021, further to a World Anti-Doping Agency investigation into irregularities in sample collection in the sport of weightlifting. The International Testing Agency served a notice of charge on Nijad Rahimov. The sole arbitrator found Nijad Rahimov to be responsible for four urine substitutions which constitute anti-doping rules violations of use of a prohibited method under Article 2.2 of the International Weightlifting Federation Anti-Doping Rules. Gab Ellising on the sport. And with that sports report, we've come to the end of our down for tonight. But before we go, here is a recap of the major stories. The war in Ukraine has escalated. Pentagon has condemned Kremlin's refusal to rule out use of nuclear weapons. Today on Undaunted, we ask if Tunisians are ready for a constitutional referendum and what's happening with the leadership in Africa. Victoria hospitals in the home front are overwhelmed at 600 cholera cases confirmed. Gendarmerie in Suzelle of French Cameroon accused of crossing the death of an Ambazonia refugee. Genuine La Republic the Cameroon journalist exposes treachery within the ranks of PRO, La Republic the Cameroon egocentric gang bent on destroying the struggle. And in sports, we told you that French Cameroon goalkeeper Andre Onana escapes on heart from a road accident. And I've got 2023 preliminary qualifiers begin. And that was it for Undaunted tonight. Bringing it to the news on Top Stories. I am Oni Opala. We leave you with ABC Amber TV images. Thanks for watching.
This is the People's Television, Ambazonia Broadcasting Corporation. The voice of the voiceless. Bringing the state of the struggle on your fingertips. Unmasking the genocide in Ambazonia. Reporting first-hand untold stories from Africa. Donate to ABC Amber TV every day. We the people must control the narrative. Internationalize the struggle, keep ground zero abreast and win the war. Cash app, 240-486-8768. Hashtag, Dollar ABC. Zell, donations at ambazoniarfoundation.org. PayPal, support at abcambat.com. Thank you. Fellow Ambazonians, 